in uh, his shot glasses. Yeah, Stuffy, you got to come find us somewhere so we can give you some shot glasses. They, they, we have the classic frosted shot glass, and then we have the new, new ones that are clear. So, um, you know, you can, if you've been around a while, you can collect them all. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, J- Jeff, we're, we're excited about the ConnectWise agreements thing. And for those of you who are not ConnectWise, um, the same update that we did for ConnectWise will be coming to give feature parity across all of our partnerships um, here in the next couple of uh, next couple of weeks. So with that, I'd like you guys to welcome Jim Lippy. Um, I, I learned some new stuff at the Wiser event and, and Jim made me smarter. Um, I always like when somebody makes me smarter to try and help make everybody smarter. So Jim, why don't we start with who you are, kind of where you come from, and then let's mm-hmm. get into what is SAS alerts. Okay, great. Well, first of all, Alex, thank you very much. And, and Marie, appreciate the opportunity to, to be with you guys today. Um, and I don't know if I made you any smarter, Alex. I, I just kind of talked about, you know, the, the stats that-, that Well, you know, you talked about things we hadn't thought of yet. Okay. Right, and I think that's that's important. Okay, fair enough. And certainly, I, you know, today I want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, folks, please ask questions. There's a lot of material I can go over for sure, but um, I talk all day, every day about this stuff. So would like certainly to engage. Uh, I'm CEO of SAS Alerts. I started in January uh, for SAS Alerts and uh, I've got two other partners in this business, uh, Chip Buck, CTO and co-founder and, and Seth Bostock, COO and co-founder. I, I work with both Chip and Seth in a previous company, a company called Independence IT, which we sold to Cloud Jumper number of years back. Um, my career goes back in the managed services space to actually 2003. Uh, I was uh, I started out as director of business development for an MSP called Thrive Networks in Boston. Uh, hey, became, we've heard of Thrive. All right. A lot of people have. Yeah. Um, and then I became CEO in 2005 and uh, then sold the business to Staples in December of 2006. And uh, I was fortunate enough to stay on at Staples as, as uh, or at, at Thrive and uh, Staples bought us, um, maintained my role as CEO of Thrive and uh, learned from a lot of great people when I was at Staples. And it was, it's really, you know, it was a great, I was a young CEO. And when we, uh, you know, just out of high school, as you, you know, you can probably imagine. Um, so that was a joke. Um, <clears throat> but it's it hard to tell when you get this haircut. That's why. Yeah. I <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah. 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 So it was, um, but it was a great learning opportunity for me. From so to be able to learn under some really Im- impressive executives from from Staples from 2006 to 2012, uh, and you know Jay Baitler, who was the executive vice president, is still a mentor of mine. I just talked to him a couple of weeks ago. Um, so uh, I was actually promoted when I was at Staples to become general manager of the Central Services Organization, uh, which was I don't know if people remember remember. Alex Marine, back in the day when uh, Staples had the Easy Techs, I, I actually have an Easy Mobile Tech uh, polo somewhere because they didn't have techs in Delaware because nothing's in Delaware. So yeah. they paid me to come stand at a trade show and be their mobile tech and answer technology questions when I was still a little break fix shop and it would take a nickel to do anything because we had, we had to make payroll, right? Before yeah. managed services, it was like, oh, you'll pay me to stand at your booth for an hour. You pay my full rate. I'll be right. there, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so you remember. So basically I got promoted to run that business. Believe it or not, it was a $180 million business. Um, so I had that plus Thrive and they did like an easy tech stuff. It was like, you bring your computer and you back it up to a, to a CD, you know, that, like, that was some of the stuff we were doing for like 29 bucks and so not exactly stimulating and exciting. Um, but it was, uh, it was fun. And like I said, I've learned a lot from, from, a, from an executive perspective. Uh, went to Independence IT, joined Chip and Seth. We sold that business. I spent the last four and a half years at Kaseya, um, where I was GM and senior vice president of Kaseya and, and ran our MSP community, 20,000 strong globally. Um, we obviously went through a massive growth curve in the four and a half years, I was like to say, when I joined in 2016, we were valued about 250 million. Today, the, it's 
about 3.5 billion. So pretty nice run there. And I also learned a lot at Kaseya. And uh, I learned some really good things. And I learned some things that MSPs don't like about big software companies. And ultimately, what we want to do at SaaS starts is learn all the good things and bring it to MSPs. Um, and then also some of the things that people didn't like, don't do that, right? And make sure that we're giving everyone the best of both, both worlds and, and giving them an ideal experience. Our goal as SaaS alerts is to become the most MSP friendly software company in the ecosystem. I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to fight over that. We can and happy to. And um, um, <laughs> I'll I, see you in Austin with some gloves. Yeah. <laughs> There's gonna be a special event at the next Austin event. Yeah, but here's <clears throat> the good news, Alex, is that we should, MSP yeah, win. That's a great right? fight to have. Like, over. right, let's just exactly. continue to strive to be uh, you know, to be the company that we're proud to be in front of our partners. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And 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 organizations like Lifecycle and SaaS Source, we will make each other better for the MSP community. Right. Yep. And that that's what's really exciting. And one of the things I love about working with organizations and people like yourself. So that's a little bit about me. SaaS alerts, you asked a question, what do we do? We allow MSPs to protect and monetize SaaS applications. And people are like, okay, well, what does that mean? That's or exactly what, what I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. Well, the easiest way to think about SaaS alerts, right, is think about us as a robotic employee that scans the SaaS tenant back and forth every 90 seconds. It only surfaces what's truly meaningful to the MSP, what they need to act on on behalf of their customer. And there is... One of the things that, you know, this time last year, sorry if some of you have already heard this, but it, it, it was certainly a big aha moment for me. This time last year, I was still at Kaseya and I was having one of my many conversations with one of our partners, MSP in the Midwest, and he was going through his business. I like to ask people, you know, talk to me about your business. It's like, I got 4,000 end users. Uh, I've got 900 servers under management. This time last year, I had 1,200. I do managed firewalls. And, above, and he keeps going. I'm like, whoa, can we back up for a second? I said, you lost 300 servers under management? What's that? In, in a year? Miami. And he's like, yeah. And I said, how? Why? He said, well, a lot of my customers are going to SaaS. And obviously, I don't manage those servers. Yeah. So I said, well, what are you doing about it? And he said, I don't know. What can I do about it? And it was that moment that I really realized that, you know, this entire industry has been in evolution and we're in a transformation stage. And MSPs need different tools to manage the technologies that their customers are using. Yeah, if you think about our RMM and PSA, they're built for on-prem infrastructure. Absolutely. Right? They're, and, and they're not even built to do that well, right? We have to then go buy Avic or LangGuard or something else to talk to the switches and firewalls and those kind of things. Um, but we get very quickly into, you know, Domonts and all those tools. They don't even work once you get off the network. They, they right. just don't do anything for you. So when I saw what you guys were doing, it really had me scratching my head going, why didn't why, why why weren't we doing this sooner right it's a good question and that's something that a lot of people have asked and i i don't necessarily i know that i kind of know the answer to that question but going back to your rmm point like as a as a shareholder still of, of kaseya um i still believe there's a place for rmm but everything needs to evolve yeah and if th you think about the world where rmm was first initially conceived and developed you know, I remember starting using Kasey in 2005, right? It was a much different world back then. Yeah, we took right. on lab tech in 2008. Yeah, I remember starting to use ConnectWise in 2004. And it was awesome. Like, I remember when we, when we implemented ConnectWise for the first time, like our monthly billing in that first month went up by like $30,000. Yeah. In a single we month. were just happy that we didn't we could stop pasting things from an Excel spreadsheet into QuickBooks to get our billing out. 
there you go right because like, we had to go paste what we did for work into, into yeah. quickbooks and then go bill for it and justify it exactly and we were like we were missing so much you know what i mean because we were doing it in these manual ways <laughs> yeah and then we get these awesome software products built for that time and immediately we got better right yeah. we got more profitable we got more efficient um and i guess more efficiency breeds more profitability right but now obviously the world's evolved and changed and we're no longer managing on-prem environments like we used to right i mean think about it this way alex if you and i were starting another business today right this sounds like a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know i'm tired of just thinking about it. oh my but, god but let's just say for the sake of this conversation, you and I were starting another business today. Yep. We're not going to go out and buy on-prem servers. No. No, right? goodhaircuts.llc is a cloud-first company. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to start thinking about from an MSP perspective, right? Like if there are hundreds of thousands of new businesses that start up every single year, um, and then you've got businesses that go out, right? There's yep. always, there's this constant churn, right? New businesses coming in, old businesses going out. And even old businesses getting acquired by newer, faster, more nimble, you know, competitors. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's, those are the ones I can, you know, I guess from a, from a churn perspective, they just turn to something else. Right. And so eventually here, all of that on-prem stuff that people are still doing is going to end up churning out. It's just yeah. the natural evolution of where we're going. We hear it all so, the time. In, in fact, I was talking to a guy today who was like, I, I literally, in fact, right before this call, I was on a, a call with a partner who said, I've got a 2008 R2 server and I have to, and I have to get them to decide whether they're going to upgrade it or move to the cloud. And that's the conversation that every MSP is having today, right? You got this, server, it's getting old. It needs to go away. Do we upgrade it or do away with it? Did you say 2008? He did. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Still exists. It's everywhere, right? And I, I have the unfortunate visibility into all of our partners who are still right. running Windows 7. And you know, there's right. a ton of that stuff still out there. Right. Um, so, you know, we still need our RMMs because there's still folks stuck in the past. But uh, we need to start looking at this new stuff because with Lifecycle Insights, this guy's going to go meet with his partner, with his customer. And he's going to say, hey, you know, this is a risk. There's exposure here and you need to upgrade it or you need to get rid of it. And he's going to push them to get rid of it. He's going to push them right. to go to the cloud. And mm -hmm. that means all of their data goes into one of these cloud stacks where he doesn't have as much visibility into it. Right. Wow. When you said 2008 server, it, it, it brought me back to like a couple of days ago, I was on the road and I saw, saw an El Camino. That's what it reminds me. I feel like an El Camino is a little a little further back than 2008, but uh, of course maybe... it's back. I'm just talking about <clears throat> yeah. in terms of holy crap uh, that's functionality. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh yeah, yep. So so talk a little bit about what you guys do with SaaS platforms because just to mm -hmm. be able to monitor them, uh, that sounds all well and good. Mm -hmm. But um, you, know, you guys are doing some really neat stuff, and you you talked through it at uh, the event in Austin, how you mm -hmm. guys are, are watching Microsoft 365, and I think. I would say an overwhelming number of our partners um, use 365, probably more so than any other tool that you guys can monitor. Right. Um, you know, what are you guys looking at in 365? What's the, the the process look like? What's the end goal? Right. So, would you mind if I share my screen? Yeah, go ahead. Hold on. I'll, I'll stop mine here, and you can fire away. Okay. Because I think sometimes it's easier to tell in pictures. Yeah. Um, so let me see. And I'm just going to jump around here. And let guys, make sure, go ahead and unmute yourselves and pipe up as questions come up. We want to yeah. get, get value for you guys out of this session. Me sitting here talking to Jim uh, probably doesn't deliver the value that you guys want to get out of it. So yeah. pipe up and, and be heard. Yeah, please. So uh, can you see my screen? I can. Okay, this isn't actually, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go to the platform. Um, because you ask a good question like, okay, what, what do we monitor? 
So first of all, the applications that are in product today are 365, Google Workspace, Salesforce, Dropbox, and Slack. Um, but you, when you go down here in the application itself, the settings, um, you can see right here in the custom, customized alert severity. Okay, I'm gonna, this is, I'm just gonna scroll kind of slow, right? So you can go down and see everything that we alert on. There's 58 different events here. So you get an idea. Now, yeah. one of the cool things that we released uh, a couple months ago was that you can, you can see in the, on the right-hand side there, uh, you can actually customize the severity of your own alerts now, right? So you monitor these events and you can, based on your specific requ requirements as an organization or what's important or not important to you, you yeah. can go in and you can actually customize the severity of these alerts. I hadn't thought about it till you said it on stage the other day that, you know, you go share all these links out, you make all these sharing links in your, in your cloud platform. And, and I do it all the time. I, I work with a customer, I record our conversation, and then I share that link out to that customer. And it makes a, a unique share link. Right. And how many of those orphaned links probably exist in your platform over the time you've been doing, doing business? And it, it just hit me that I don't even know where in my platform to go and look and see where all those exist. So let me show you this. So this is a slide that we and Tim's share. just telling me I have to go buy a Google audit tool to be able to see that in my Google platform. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why, why is that not a thing? Right. right. But, it, but, and yet it's not. So I'll just kind of skip around based on our conversation. I'm not going to go through anything formal, but since you're bringing up, you know, shared links. So in that presentation, I mentioned that we have something called the SASE report. It stands for SAS application security insights. And what we did was from January 1st to May 31st, we took all of the data from our platform and we, we, at, we anonymized it, aggregated it, and put it into a single report. And the report has 30,000 users. We had, at the time, 105 MSPs. We now have 200. Um, and it constituted 750 small businesses, okay? So you think 750 small businesses and about 30,000 users, okay, that's what is represented in this report. So a decent sample size, but not very, not huge by any means, right? But first of all, most, it's very difficult, difficult to get this information around small businesses, right? So this is, and you're looking at companies from two employees up to 1,800 employees, okay? So everyone looks at enterprise and has a lot of great SaaS enterprise. Very few people actually can get down to the small business. But, you know, if you and I, Alex, are doing, you know, we started this business or we're thinking about starting another business, right? And we're sharing information back and forth via yeah. Google Drive or OneDrive or whatever. Like, let's just say <clears throat> six weeks from now, we're like, oh, you know what? This is too much work. We're not going to end up doing this. Okay, whatever. We stop those links that we shared are still out there because 99% of end users do not terminate those links. So they become orphaned. And when they become orphaned, that means someone can grab them and use them to tunnel back into that SaaS tenant. So it leaves a massive gap. And specifically when you're sharing it external to your own organization. Right. Right. One of the things that we found in our study was that, you know, just again, based on our, our sample size, you're looking at 175 uh, files shared per hour. And 16% of those are shared externally. That surprises me alone, just that the external number of shares is that small because pretty much everything we generate a link for to share is external. And we do a good bit of it. Right. So it's just well, first of the all, worst at that, right? Because we're just yeah. throwing out there whatever we need to do to, to communicate with the customer. Yeah. To make it easy on them. But you're talking still, it's a, I mean, it's 16% and a really big number. Yeah. 
like 317,000 shares, right? So you're talking about almost 60,000 shares over 750 businesses in a little over five months. So what do MSPs do with this information? Like what's the, what's the next step now that we accept that this is a thing? Mm -hmm. Honestly, the way we use cloud platforms is almost kind of broken. It's by right. design. It's we're using them as designed, but we never clean up after ourselves. We never, uh, mm -hmm. you know, nobody ever goes back in and does the cleanup and the maintenance. How do you use this to get an end result out of your customer? I mean, MSPs don't have time to go in and clean up after <laughs> every silly sales guy who who creates sales link, or, you know, who creates links. Yeah. So now I'll, I'll jump to this to answer that question. So this is um, just signing into our reporting engine here and first of all let me say this like people aren't even aware of what they're sharing and what they're doing a lot of times like in this chat right here um i don't know let's just take a look i mean has anyone shared a link in here uh no we still see your uh your sas alerts login page oh you know what let me see Share screen. Okay. So what I was just saying in terms of this chat, right? Let's just take a look at this. Can you see the chat? My chat? I still see, I see a risk dashboard. Okay, you know what? Uh, I won't be able to share my chat because it's in the thing, but I, I, I scroll up, right? And I see that you guys shared Lifecycle Insights, freshdesk.com support solutions articles. Oh yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So you just, we naturally do this, right? So one of the applications that we're going to, so people ask why Slack is because people are constantly sharing information in Slack. Yeah. And then we're gonna be, in, we're gonna actually start monitoring Zoom too. We're like, why Zoom? Like this is exactly what this, yeah, yeah. Because anywhere that people are sharing information <clears throat> needs to be tracked. Yeah. So this comes back to your question. Okay, so now if you're an MSP, you you understand this information, you're armed with this information. Okay, now how do I act on it? So we're now in our reporting engine. And I, I can go here. And first of all, this is, just take a step back. So this is, you know, MSP in South Carolina called VC3. I can just go in, I, can, I uploaded their logo from their website, changed their, the color scheme because I can do that, right? So now I can completely customize this the way I want it to look. I hit save and I'm off to the races. So now I've got these custom reports. I go in here and I say, okay, I, um, I want to look at some of these file share stuff. So I'm going to do the SAS cyber assessment. I'm going to pick my customers that are in a drop down that I've already set up here. Uh, I'm going to pick a time frame. Okay, so uh, let's just go back to August. We'll do the month of August, and we'll run this. So we can see here, and I'm going to explain. So we we spell out exactly what you're looking at yeah and i'm going to i'm going to explain why we do that because msps like oh well i can just explain it well what if that what if you, you're not there to explain it and i'm going to get into that in a second but so uh, gr green is good red is bad now this is all interactive stuff i can scroll over this and i can take a look at what it actually is yep. so if you're presenting this in a zoom or in you know a conference room, you can be interactive with this, right? In dynamic. Um, so I, I now know like all you know basically where the critical alerts from different geographic regions are coming from for for my customer. And you guys have integrations to our common PSAs and those kind of things, so that if a, a critical alert comes through, like someone logged into to my G Suite from South Africa, you're going to alert the MSP. In their in their working tools, right? They don't have to be in SAS alerts to do all this, right? So this is, was never designed to be another pane of glass for people to look at. It's we have integrations with ConnectWise, with Autotask, and with uh, BMS. Okay. 
So How about yeah. our, now we integrate with Synchro and Halo. Have you guys looked at those guys? Or are they on your so program? We definitely looked at them and they're great platforms. We just haven't gotten to them yet in terms of integration. That being said, what we did was we created a universal email connector. Perfect. So, so you can still send alerts to those. Yeah, guys. you can still send alerts into those Perfect. systems as cool. well. Right. So basically now as the MSP, you know, I can go. So Alex, just say I'm your MSP. Right. I can go to you and say, look, Alex, we're monitoring your 365. And over the course of the month of August, you know, we monitored for you uh, nearly 64,000 events. Um, almost 1,100 of those were critical alerts and 585 were medium alerts. So what we did was we looked at all of those critical events and alerts and where, where it was necessary, we intervened and, and mitigated your exposure. Um, and here's a list of the incidents from a breakdown perspective. Okay, and this can this is interactive, so you can be dynamic with it and just change things as you go. So authentication success doesn't matter. OneDrive modified doesn't matter. Um, so we'll just go down and you know what's ever important yep. we will highlight, right? So then we um, we go down. We, we see the top ten users in your company that were unable to log in. Um, you know, either failed attempts, right? Yep. So we can see these individual users and and then in the application itself, we can do forensics and we can actually dig in on any user that you want, Alex, because you may have questions like, well, why why is Laura B like not able to log in 261 times? Well, you know, that actually could be a sign of a brute force attack. Right. Right. right? And then we actually explain here what a brute force attack is. And you got bad actors constantly knocking at the door and what all that means, right? Um, then you look at your top 10 users in the business throwing off the most alerts. And one of the things I say all the time, Alex, is look, to me, this information could be completely innocuous, um, meaningless. However, when I pair it with your knowledge about your own business, it could be quite meaningful. Yeah. So let's just say for the sake of this conversation, Alex, you were like, wait a minute. Uh, last week was Anthony's last day, right? And I see Anthony here just threw off 115 alerts in the month of August. What was he doing? Why did he right. throw off that many alerts? Well, you know that he left. I didn't know he left, I'm your MSP. Right. I don't necessarily know when everyone leaves. So and guess what? We just found out that he just went to a competitor because he just posted on LinkedIn. Right. Right. And now he so shared now, some files he shouldn't have shared or made some right. accessible that he shouldn't have made accessible. Exactly. I'm sure no MSP here has ever dealt with that. Never. <laughs> yeah. So now, Alex, what we're going to do is after we go, we have this meeting. We're going to go back through and we're going to look because you told me that he left. I'm going to, from a forensic standpoint, I'm going to go back in the application. I'm going to, I'm going to dial in on Anthony and I'm going to look at all of his alerts because I can run a report just on him and see, you know, what's going on with that specific user. Yep. And I can tell you the files that he shared, who he shared them with, when it was, um, we can follow those documents around the internet. Nice. So coming back to your question, now that you're armed with this concept and idea that this is important, how do you act on it? You act on it through visual, visualization and reporting back with the customer and, and collaborating with them on the information you have that you can give them. Um, and then you've got your login activity, right? and unapproved logins. So these are, you know, these, lots of times what happens, you see this because these are from unapproved countries. Yeah. Someone's got their credentials. Yep. And they're logging in from someplace they're not supposed to. Yep. And that's why we see this. Um, and then you looked at, okay, where, where, okay, where are they coming from, right? These are the locations they're coming from. And then let's go back, you know, the externally shared files. 
This is an aggregate look. 142 anonymous links. What? Insane, right? So, and here, here are the users you know, that are out there sharing stuff. Like, so. And now, does anonymous mean shared to anyone? Yes. Okay. It's not to a specific person. So is the is the user here then who the file is shared to? Or who shared so, the file? So uh, shared to. Shared to. Okay. So shared to anonymous is literally open to the internet. Right. Yep. Got it. Super dangerous. They're all dangerous, but even more so when it's not directed at a specific person. Right. Got it. Does that answer your question, Fred? Yeah, right, cool. Okay. So then we can dig in on these individuals and we can go back again based on forensics and say, okay, what were these documents? And now as the MSP, so Alex, look, you've got all these employees. You can see what they're sharing. Yep. How about we spend a little time? I'll work with them and we just find out what these are. And then I, we just terminate them. So, so how do we, how do same... we go back and kill all these shares? So that's Tim's question. Yeah. So good, good follow-up question. So you go into the tenant and you set it up so these terminate. That's what you do today. Now, in about four or five months, what you're going to be able to do about SAS alerts is you'll be able to opt in to remediation and you'll be able to, from the actual application, from SAS alerts, be able to kill it. So what I hear is coming soon, the ability to click an easy button. Yes. We like easy buttons. I'm familiar with the concept. Yes. So, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, our internal testing name for our, uh, for one of our platform features was the easy button. So oh, really? we figured so, Staples wouldn't like it very much if we actually used it outside of the company, but yeah, yeah that was our so, dev name. Just going back to the Staples thing for a second. So at one point, the easy button made Staples one of the most recognized brands in the world. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and What's funny is that the easy button almost never happened. Their, their, initially, their initial tagline was going to be, uh, instead of that, that was easy, um, no hassle office products. Yeah. And they're like, we can't have the word no and hassle. At some point- In your marketing? Their, yeah. In, in our tagline. It's just yeah. you know, two negatives two probably negatives. are what we want to do. So someone had the bright idea saying, okay, let's make this easy. Um, so yeah, our, our plan is to make it really easy through this remediation. Um, that being said, we, we didn't come to that decision lightly, Alex, because initially we did not want to create another backdoor into any of these tenants. Yeah. Um, you know, supply chain attacks. Right. So, uh, that is why we're doing it in a very thoughtful manner. That is why you still will get the application on a default basis as just monitoring and alerting and you have right. to opt in to remediation and if you understand the risk associated then you can go ahead and take take advantage of the easy button i like it i like it so fred uh, made, made the statement that he always puts an expiration date and a password on all of his shares do you guys pick that up do you identify that differently as a share that's open to the world or a share that's not password or, or date protected yeah, we do distinguish. I mean, one of the first of all, let's just define something that is orphaned. Orphaned is anything that is goes dormant for more than thirty days. Thirty days. What does more. dormant mean? Nobody's used it. No one's or no touched it. No okay. One's touched it. Like that example that you and I spoke about before, right? Yep. So my right. spreadsheet that's out there that gets updated every week doesn't count as dormant or or even really problematic. Right. Exactly. Okay. okay. Um, but when it goes orphan, you're going to want to obviously terminate it. Now, right. Fred sounds like he's doing things the right way, um, but he's also in IT and understands what he should be doing. Right. This isn't really, you know, if all of our end users thought like us, like IT people, A, right. we wouldn't have jobs. And if we, you know, we wouldn't get paid nearly what we get paid to solve these problems because there wouldn't be nearly as many problems. Um, so this is geared toward the vast majority of the end users out there that aren't using the right precautions when leveraging SaaS applications. Right. Now, 
I always say one of the great things about SaaS applications is it's super easy to share information. One of the bad things about SaaS applications is it's yeah. super easy to share, to share information. information. Yeah, no, that's, that's so true. So today you guys are monitoring a handful of applications out there. What's on your roadmap for, you said, you said, um, you're doing Slack today. Which one did you say was coming? So Slack's Zoom. You said Zoom. Slack's in QA right now. It'll be in production soon. Um, Zoom is on uh, on the list, um, and um, and then before Zoom, actually, we are going to be releasing. Uh, and not many people know this at this point. I told the seven figure group, you know, last week for the first time anywhere in public, um, but I'll share it with, with your folks as well. Alex, um, IT Glue. Is, I feel like that's a drop mic moment right there. So say it again. IT Glue is up next. They're gonna be monitoring your IT Glue. How much data is in IT Glue for an MSP? So like everything, that's the, that's the app that keeps you up at night. Yeah, so this is what was shocking to me and why we have to do it. Mm -hmm. So when we dug into it and we, you know, when we first started thinking about this product, we were like, oh, it would be cool to kind of also help MSPs with their, their own tools, right? And then, but you get into this and you're kind of lose focus on it. And then we had MSPs start coming to us and saying, can you do any of the MSP tools? Like we want to make sure that we're locked in. They're the scariest tools we have. Yeah. Right? I mean, so then we look an Excel spreadsheet pales by comparison to the data that's in ConnectWise, IT Glue, any of the RMM platforms, like right. these things are scary. Right. So, so then I started asking MSP owners, not techs, owners. Can, do you use IT Glue? Yes. Do you have all your customer passwords in IT Glue? Yes. 95% of IT Glue users or MSPs store their passwords in IT Glue. It's where the value of the product is, right? Right, it's, it's part of the functionality, so why wouldn't you? Right. So then the next, the follow-up questions are, can you tell me who's logging into IT Glue, when they're logging in? Um, what country they logged in from, maybe? Where, where they're <laughs> logging in from. Yeah. Um, what they're looking at, what they're taking, and what they're changing. And everyone looks at you with kind of a blank stare and they say, no. Right. Now, does IT Glue have audit logs? Yes. Do people look at them? No. Um, so uh, someone came up with- We looked at them when somebody got fired, right? Yeah. When somebody got fired, left the organization on bad terms, we went, oh crap, we got to go change every password they've ever touched, get an IT Glue, see what they've touched. Mm -hmm. right. It's the only time we looked at them. Mm -hmm. So- <laughs> someone came so when I was explaining the fact we were doing IT glue the other day they said that is brilliant that is awesome I can't wait and they came up with this analogy I didn't but it was it's kind of like your credit card statement like your credit card so credit card companies have gotten really good at alerting you when there's unusual behavior going on with your credit card right mm -hmm. uh, I know I get those alerts yeah and mm -hmm. To the point where sometimes if it's really unusual, you can't use your credit card. Mm -hmm. They lock it up yeah. Yeah. until they call you and find out that it's you. But so what we're doing is we're alerting the owner when something unusual is happening yeah. uh, from an end user perspective and saying, hey, look over here, as opposed to making the MSP owner go into their credit card statement every single month and scroll down and make sure every single charge is correct. Well, that brings up an even better question. Is there an API capability for you guys to actually lock somebody out of IT Glue until something like that's resolved? Does that feature so, even exist? Does that function exist in the API? So it's interesting. And right now we're still working through it, right? Because we're gonna, we're gonna release this in, in October, but that would end up coming not initially, because again, remember, we're still alerting and monitoring. Right. Once we get to the remediation stage in the product, right? 
we we're going to treat it glue just like we treat any other application just like we th treat 365 right so therefore yes if something nefarious is going on and something is alerted um then you'll be able to basically lock that account right one of the things i found out i didn't know this until we started really looking into this with the right permissions you can download the entire password base yeah yeah so, that's a little scary isn't it yeah yeah. That is something that should be alerted on, no matter what. No, I don't care who has permissions. Yep. Right? That is, that that is, is absolutely that right. I don't care who you were. I want to know you did it, right? right? There may be a legitimate reason for it, right? We may be right. printing a run book to go stick in a safe somewhere. Right. Good use for it. Right. right. Um, but those uses are very few and far between and should always be alerted on. Right. Yeah. Well, Alex, so just to say, for the sake of this conversation, right, you're my COO. So I'm a MSP owner, CEO, whatever. And uh, you're my COO. And obviously you have permissions to do whatever you want in IT Glue, right? I don't care. I still want to get an alert on my phone yeah. if you are downloading all the passwords from IT. Right, yeah, I agree 100%. As somebody who owned an MSP, my most trusted person, I would still want to know why, you know, if they did that just so I could go, hey, what's up? Right. Is everything okay? Yeah. Um, so. Robert brought up a question that was going through my mind. There's other products along the, the IT glue vein, right? You have mm -hmm. IT boost, you have pass portal, you have Hoodoo. Right. I'm sure I'm missing one or two there. Um, but, but you've, you've got, got a few others ones. there. Once you get IT glue done, is your goal to expand to some of those other products? So I know once we get to, once we get to I, once IT glue is done, the next one up is data RMM. Okay. So and just like we'll, everybody else, you have bandwidth uh, availability issues with developers, and you can only do so much at a time. Exactly. I hear so you. We've got <laughs> they hear us say that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We've got nine developers right now. We'll soon have 11 uh, and, and maybe even uh, 12 or 13 by the end of September. So it's we're awesome. moving as fast as we can, um, but obviously we have to prioritize. So, and you can imagine, right, like we're going to go where most of the market is first. Yep. Well, and that's that's why all of our new features roll out to ConnectWise first, right? Uh, right. William said, you know, he'd love to see the the ConnectWise stack in there as well. So, you know, alerting on ConnectWise and and uh, automate, and I'm sure everybody else would too. Um, yes. So I'm glad he said that because it's on the list and it's awesome. it will be coming. So IT Glue is first. Data RMM will come next. Uh, then most likely ConnectWise, and then Kaseya RMM. Stuffy, you're 100% right. IT vendors need to come up with a common language and data format for their integrations because they're freaking miserable. Oh, <laughs> no no two that, vendors do it point. the same. Yeah, no two vendors point. do it the same. It's difficult. Um, and that just makes, it means it takes forever for Jim to get you know from the first integration to the third one when it should be. Right. Once you get the first one figured out, the next five just go bang, 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 bang because they're all done. Right. But so we can't Robert. Get data framework at all. Yeah, yeah. So not only that, right, but one of the things I found out um, when you know, I joined SaaS Alerts, I had no idea. So all of these SaaS applications, they, they all have, they all throw off security logs, right? Yeah. And part of what we're solving for is making a person actually look at all those security logs. Yeah. So that, that so leads to Matt's question. Matt asked right. what it looks, what the workflow looks like for these alerts. So um, what's it like to receive a message uh, or receive and manage all these alerts across all of our customers? Because obviously MSPs are sensitive to, I buy a platform and it just vomits alerts all over the place and I don't have any, uh, you know, and now I need more bandwidth to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, even the, the least expensive products or something like that, um, you know, it's a little scary to, to get all those alerts. I remember when we turned on an extra alert in Automate and we got 63,000 tickets the next morning. Right. Um, everybody has a little fear of that. Yeah, no question. And it's one of the things that we've you know worked really hard to limit the noise. Um, so that's why you're, you're allowed to customize your alerting severity. Uh, you can snooze specific alerts, but then you can also run a report to find out what was snooze um, because you don't want a tier one tech in there just snoozing everything right they wouldn't um, do that come yeah. on <laughs> but going back to that sassy report 
So out of the 15 million logged events that we looked at from January to, to May, um, only 0.83% actually was a critical alert. So let's just call it 1%. And one, another 1% 1 were medium alerts. So just call it 2% of that 15 million, right, are actually something that the MSP should act on. So I think, yes, when you light, light up a customer for the first time, you're going to see some stuff. But look, good hygiene solves all of this. And then you get to get to a point where they're where they need to be. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see, you know, a lot on a go forward basis. Is, is this one of those things too, where once you get into 365 and start securing it properly, right, get that secure score from a double digit number to a high triple digit number, uh, now you see fewer and fewer alerts because no there's question. security in place. Okay, no question. Because also you now you're helping your end users to do things the right way. Yeah, on a go forward basis. Yeah, right. Um, and 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 by the way, you know, just coming back to this point that Robert made before, the thing that I didn't realize was that all of these SaaS applications, right, they throw off their security logs. I knew all that, but they're in completely different languages. Like an IAM event in three sixty five looks way different than it does in Google. Looks different than it does in Salesforce. Looks different than it does in Dropbox. Right. Right. So one of the things that we do from a SaaS search standpoint is we actually standardize the language across all of it. So Very nice. The MSP, it looks the same. Have you turned that language into English so that my customer would understand it? Uh, yeah, for the most part, we, Good. we have. Yeah. Good. Um, so, but, but here's the great thing about it. The customer, they really only get these reports. Right. The high, high level. Right. The other you, stuff. And this just came out, like rafi has been with us now since I think February or March. Um, but we now launched this. So I don't even think he's seen this. It came out this week. But Oh, cool, you cool can, new stuff. Yeah, three clicks and an email address. That's what it takes to send out these reports I showed you to your customer in an automated fashion. Okay. So recurring, bang, I'm going to do this, you know, whatever I want, right? Daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. I'm just going to stay with monthly um two clicks three clicks select the customer or select the report excuse me um actually four clicks because now i gotta select the customer and then the email address nice and then i'm done and now this customer the first day of every month is going to get the SAS cyber assessment like we went through in their inbox very nice is there any reason like with, you know, with a lot of reports that get auto generated, we want to kind of send them to ourselves first so we make sure our customer doesn't see something that freaks us out. Are these fairly well sanitized enough that they can go direct to customer or should they go to an account manager for triage first? Well, if I'm an MSP, what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, before every, you can send them to whoever you want, right? So if you can set, you can, I would, if I'm a account manager at MSP, I'm getting them daily. Yeah, if I'm an account manager. I don't want my tools sending something straight to my customer because I want to protect that relationship, right? I'm, I'm, I'm that relationship guy. But um, although a lot of people, a lot of MSPs do just want to send. Yeah. Right. And then a lot of MSPs. Let's be honest. A lot of MSPs don't have their act together. Let's just call a spade a spade. Um, so be honest. <laughs> that's what we do here. That's why 20 people show up on a Friday, right. uh, on, a, on a holiday Friday. Um, so. Um, a couple things. Tim asked a, a good question that kind of goes into another question that I was going to ask, which was around compliance frameworks. Number one, he asked if you tie into or align with any compliance frameworks. And my question was going to be, are you aware of any frameworks that are you aware of any? I, I'm sure that frameworks want want you to monitor these cloud apps, but I'm not sure the exact portion or the exact part of a framework that says thou must. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything's about on prem AD and about directory services and uh, are, are you are you guys exploring or or do you have any experience in compliance frameworks and where this ties in and, and where this is applicable to folks who are making a compliance push? This is the entire reason why SaaS alerts exists. Okay. So the story behind the way SaaS alerts was started was that Seth Bostock, one of the co-founders, COO, was working as CTO of a company called Clamify, like two and a half years ago. And 
he needed to pass a SOC 2 audit because they, they're a 15 person organization, but they do business with big insurance carriers. So in order for them to transact with the insurance carriers, they needed to get their audit. They need to get have their compliance. So you're going through the audit and the auditors come in and be like, okay, show us this, this, and this. Like, we don't have that. Right. Like, well, we just have SaaS applications. Seth was like, look, we're, we're on Google. You know, we're on G Suite. Can't we just trust they do it all right for us? Yeah, <laughs> we're, in, we're in G Suite, Force.com, Salesforce, yeah. Jira, and maybe there's one other um, SaaS application I'm missing. That's it. Yeah. And everyone's just accessing these applications or laptops. Yeah. And the auditor was like, look, I don't know what to tell you. I can't pass you until I have verification that, that these applications are being monitored. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and the users are being monitored. And yeah. so Seth looked around the, you know, the world and said, what can I, what kind of SaaS connectors out there that I can leverage? The only thing he found at the time was Arctic Wolf. Mm. Alex, wow. guess how much Arctic Wolf charged him for a 15 person organization to monitor for it. Uh, actually, it was just Google at the time. Um, Google. I'm, uh, I'm afraid to guess. Give, throw out a number. 500 bucks a month. $28,000 a year. <laughs> wow. So that's that, That's going to lead to the question that's already been posed. Um, every, these guys are, are getting hit every day with a new product. They're, they, they have, uh, you know, they get spammed with new vendors and they have some, some, uh, some weariness of new products and, and new spend. Um, what does this thing cost? Are, we, are you willing to share that here in front of, of course, people? Because or? these are all MSPs. Okay. Um, it's 50 cents per user per month. Oh my God. We're all going broke. So once, <laughs> once, and once you get to 200 users, you actually use it internally for yourself. Okay. Um, Tim said he went to your signup page and got prompted for a promo code. And now he wants a promo code. So you I know I, everyone gets a 30 day free trial. <laughs> there you go. Um, everyone on this list gets a 30 day free trial. We, uh, but I will tell you the process. When you sign up for the trial, you will go into a holding pen, if you will. So we can verify your domain because we only do business with MSPs and we take it to an extreme. So you don't sell direct. So we don't sell direct. Awesome. Right. So we, we need to verify you're an MSP. Once you're verified as MSP, you will have 30 day free trial. And I recommend take advantage, put as many customers on as you want and then run these reports. So if I put all my customers on it for 30 days and then half of them don't want to pay an upcharge or uh, I don't see just the value in keeping it, I can take them off. Absolutely, 30, just take them off. I like that. We do a 30-day free trial. I like it. I like it. Jim, I like where you guys are coming from. It is 3.59 on a Friday yeah. before a holiday. I know okay. everybody got kind of excited and asked a bunch of questions. Does anybody have anything they really want to get off their chest before we cut everybody loose? Because I hate to keep everybody over on a Friday afternoon. I'll hang out as long as you guys want to chat. But uh, if anybody has something they want to get answered before we run away, um, I'd like to open up to that and let you guys have that conversation because uh, when I heard um, we can, we're going to be able to monitor IT glue, that was when my, you know, my, my light bulb went off. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, the GoDaddy doesn't work. Unfortunately, I just saw that. I don't even know what that means to GoDaddy tenant. GoDaddy basically stands between like, Oh, the if they have buying. 365. Yeah. Uh, the one more reason not to do your 365 through GoDaddy. Or anybody else. I must for jump for a call, but I'll Jim, thanks do. so much for joining us. Yeah, this is great. Absolutely. I appreciate it. I could talk about this all day. So my email is jim at sasslurts.com. Happy to answer any questions. I